Hi, Pastor Ed here again on installment number four of our Kingdom Empowerment series, Becoming a Kingdom-Minded People. My subject matter today is a superior kingdom. Let's get right into it. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Now, first of all, this is a statement out of the prophetic book of Revelation, and there will be a day when Jesus Himself reigns on the earth physically at His second coming. But I also believe that this can speak to us of the ambition and desire of God that He rules and reigns at all times on the earth. This is the goal of God and the goal of His church, that the people of God should invade society with the virtues, values, and principles of the kingdom and influence people that then will influence society to the cause of righteousness. The Bible also tells us in Isaiah 55, 6 and 9, these words. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake His way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and He will have mercy on him and to our God He will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So the subject matter as we consider what it means to be a kingdom person is to understand that our God is great and greatly to be praised. And He is above all things. His thoughts are superior in their origin and in their practicality to our everyday life. His ways, when applied, are superior to the ways of the world. So our understanding today in this study is that a kingdom of God person understands that on the inside of them, where the indwelling Holy Spirit is and where the Word of God has been brought into renewing our minds, we have, been inherit, we have inherited a superior kingdom. So we do not need to be afraid when we go into the world, into the systems of the world, uh, into our marketplace, into the school systems, into uh, our neighborhoods, into our families, whatever we might find ourselves, we do not need to be afraid that that system or that way of living or way of thinking will somehow overcome us. We understand that this is a superior kingdom, that these are higher virtues and higher values. For instance, love is superior to hatred. It always overcomes hate. Even if hate seems to win, in the physical, material realm, love lasts forever. We also know that mercy is superior to vengeance, and honesty is superior to dishonesty. When you're honest, God blesses that. Your life is full of blessing. But when you lie and you're dishonest, that is, that is an inferior way of living. We understand that faith is superior to fear. And these are the weapons of our warfare. So as I close my thought today, I want you to just renew your mind on the fact that God's ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are superior to those of the world. So we can go in confidence in every realm of society and understand that we have a superior kingdom. You can go this week into your marketplace, into your workplace, into your school system, whatever you find yourself in, you can go in with the confidence that God is superior to all of that that the devil would come against us with. So let's go in that confidence. Let's go in that passion. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this superior set of values, superior laws and principles and, and virtues. And I thank you, Father, for empowering us with those superior ways of thinking and ways of living. Help each one of us to go into the spheres of influence of our society and make a difference. We thank you for the power to do so because of the superior kingdom in which we serve in Jesus' name, amen.